I'm gonna talk about the intricate details behind Laurel Hubbard, the trans Olympic weightlifter from New Zealand being accepted into the Tokyo Olympics. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com. And if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning more about sports performance, you want an interesting, logical perspective on training, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. For those that don't know, Laurel Hubbard is a female weightlifter, and up until 2013, Hubbard had competed as a male Olympic weightlifter, and then she came out that she was trans and got into women's Olympic weightlifting. And so I think this brings up a lot of interesting discussions that need to be had. We have to discuss this stuff. This is prevalent in society and we need to have progressive discussion on reality. And I think that when you're having a discussion of this nature, we have to first look at the instance that's going on. So Laurel Hubbard grew up a male, adapted as a male throughout life. So any physical stimulus up until 2013 was entirely as a male. Her joint structure, her bones are gonna be much more dense. She's much more likely to have a more powerful nervous system. And she's also going to have much more lean muscle mass because she adapted over time as a male. Now, she transitioned in 2013 and started to compete as a female Olympic weightlifter. And so that brought up a lot of different discussions. Is it fair that Laurel Hubbard was competing against other women when she grew up and, and adapted as a male. And even to this point now where it's 2021 and she's 43 years old, and she has now gotten to the point where she's qualified for the Tokyo Olympics as a female. And so in fairness, we have to sit there and discuss, all right, what is fair to both sides? And what does fair even mean? And I think it's important to think what is fair? So it's always this balancing act of, we need to make sure that our actions in life do not have negative impacts purposefully on other individuals based off of whatever they're doing. And so when we get back to the Laurel Hubbard discussion, I think it's important that, dude, this is a really, really difficult conversation, but it needs to be discussed. It can't be ignored. And the whole goal of this video, of this discussion, is that we can start to come up with what are reasonable solutions to the issue, or is the issue okay and then we should move forward. And so is it fair that Laurel Hubbard, from a physiological perspective, is able to qualify for the Olympics. What's the whole point of sport? What's the whole point of competition? And I think that how I see athletics and, and, and sport sporting events is that it's an opportunity for people to have a level playing field, to, to, to get somewhere and to be able to compete against one another as level as possible. Yes, there's gonna be some athletes that maybe have a greater advantage off of facilities and they have a greater advantage off of even perhaps a coach, but their opposition might have a greater advantage from a mental perspective or a greater advantage from athleticism and ability to coordinate. And so that sort of levels things out. And then over time, I believe the main goal behind competing is what that internal fire, what that internal response is when you are able to push yourself beyond what you believed or perceived as your limiting factor. And I think that that's like that main thing is why do we compete? Why do I coach? I coach athletes so that I'm experiencing a journey with them. I, I wanna be a part of developing them over time. And I wanna share those lessons that I've learned with them and help them cultivate that energy and that positivity and that progressiveness so that they in turn can work through all of these different trials and all these different struggles to then get to the point so that they recognize that I, you know, as a coach, believe in them more than they believe in themselves to a point. And then they start to realize like, I can do more than I ever thought I could do. And then when they achieve something fantastic, when they achieve something that is legitimately awesome, they have this feeling that is almost indescribable, this feeling 
of just euphoria of being in the moment of just experiencing that flow state right where you just don't even realize what you're doing until afterwards and when you realize it you're really outside of that state and i think that that to me is the most important part behind competition in athletics is it's about the journey and then having struggles and then getting to that next step by defeating those struggles and conquering those struggles and then doing that over and over again and as a coach and with an athlete you can generate this really really unique relationship going through all these different stories really and then you get to a point where you go to the olympics or you go to the world championships or you know you make it to a professional level and you can just really really continue to grow and work towards a higher mental state that then as you age physically and you get out of athletics you can then use those tools and those skills that you've acquired from athletics in the rest of your life and in the rest of your relationships. When we think about things from a fairness perspective and from a competitive perspective, life's bigger than sports, but the lessons we learn from sports can really help us all see one another progressively and positively. And so when I think about the Laurel Hubbard discussion, it immediately brings to light. I believe that Laurel Hubbard should 100% have the right to compete. I believe that she 100% should be allowed to compete because she needs to experience those journeys, those trials, those tribulations, and to work towards a different level. She absolutely should never be denied that. Now, where it gets complicated is that she, Laurel, could have a negative impact on other women. I know Sarah Robles, I know Tim, her coach, I know that they've competed against Laurel and it's not necessarily fair to someone like Sarah Robles who has matured her entire life as a female to then have to go and compete against another individual who has adapted for most part of their life as a male because there is physiological advantages. So that's at that world-class level. They competed at Worlds together and now they will compete uh, together at, at the Olympics. That has to be recognized. Personally, I have had a 49K lifter, Haley Reichert, compete against a male from Thailand who identified as female and lose to that individual and lose medals. And so that individual had a dis distinct advantage that was unfair, unfair in the light that identified as a female had a physiological advantage over all the women. And I think that that's a key part here is that no one in this discussion is standing up for the women involved. No one is saying that it's okay. And one aspect we've got to bring up is that there was a weightlifter from New Zealand who was an excellent female weightlifter who lost her spot because of Laurel Hubbard. And that individual has sort of been brushed out of the picture and no one really brings her up, but she unfairly was brushed to the side. Now, if we put things into play, okay, and if we discuss this, is there an advantage, an unfair advantage for Laurel as far as from a physiological perspective? Absolutely, I believe that absolutely. She's at an unfair advantage over women in her weight class. And I believe it's extremely apparent just based off of her age. She's 43 years old. And if you look at Olympic weightlifters, if you look at athletes, strength athletes in general, to compete at a world-class, at an Olympic caliber level, when you're 43 is almost unheard of. I would say is unheard of. In fact, I remember Randy Couture fighting in the UFC when he was like 43 years old, and everybody knew he was on steroids. Everybody knew he was using performance-enhancing drugs to compete in the UFC, fighting for world championships at 43 years old. That's reality. My analysis initially then would be she's at an unfair advantage, Laurel Hubbard, over her opposition and her opposition needs to be treated fairly. So how can we remedy this situation? How can we take this individual who adapted as a male for the majority of their life, but still provide opportunity? And I think that's where it gets a little bit hairy. It was what we have to have a means for trans individuals to compete. I believe in this case, Laurel Hubbard should be allowed to compete at local events for Olympic weightlifting. And if we can go back to that discussion of competition and athletics, Laurel Hubbard would still be able to engage with the journey, engage with the trials, engage with the struggles of being an elite athlete and have zero negative impact on other individuals while still competing at those local events. I even believe that Laurel Hubbard should be allowed to compete at a national event. Now, when we get to that national event, I would say at that level, she should be allowed to compete with women, but 
not given those awards and those medals that are given out, but still allowed to compete. And I think it has to go back to why are we competing? We're competing for the journey. We're competing for their stories and the trials. Now, there is some, I don't want to call it superficial, but some surface level stuff where it's cool to receive a medal. It's cool to be recognized by those outside of your individual struggle. And I believe that if she's at a national event and she goes out and hits monster PRs, people will cheer and be happy. And at least I would hope that. I would hope that people will be supportive of her hitting a greater personal standards. But at the same time, I don't believe it's fair to take those medals or to take those opportunities away from other women. And I think that that's where it can come into play, especially because we're not really seeing this as prevalent with females that transition to males. So if a, if a woman would transition to a male, and now we have trans males competing against other males, they are gonna be at a massive disadvantage, a massive disadvantage. And think about if they got into weightlifting, or if they got into mixed martial arts, or if they got into other sports, they could be at a, one, a huge disadvantage physiologically, but two, they could get seriously hurt. And we have to start to think about that. I believe to positively remedy Laurel Hubbard's discussion is that she's at an advantage. And I believe that we could have the trans Olympics as, as something, as an opportunity for trans males and trans females to be able to compete fairly with one another without taking away from other individuals who might be in an unfair situation. So when someone like Laurel Hubbard competes, she's still able to compete locally. She still should be allowed to compete competitively at the national level. I think at Grand Prix and things like that, she should be allowed to compete internationally. But at things like the Olympics or the World Championships, I think that there needs to be that discussion of maybe there is trans, just like there is the power games and just as there is able-bodied. And, and then on top of that, we can start to see, all right, let's, let's think about this a, a little bit more progressively and not just put a whole bunch of women and throw all the women aside while you know putting Laurel up above everybody else. And, I, and I'm not saying that we've done that entirely, but when we look at fairness as Laurel needs to be treated fairly, so she needs to have the right to compete and we need to come up with a means for her to compete and all the women that she's competing against also need to be treated fairly. What can we do in this very troubling and, and hard situation? It's a very hard discussion. So do I believe that Laurel Hubbard should be allowed to compete at the Olympics? No, I do not believe that she should be allowed to compete at the Olympics. Do I believe that she should be allowed to compete? Yes, she should be allowed to compete nationally, locally. I believe that she should not be receiving uh, medals at a national event. I think locally, I think it's a different, it's a different ball game. I think that we have to prioritize what the, the journey is and why we want to compete. That should take on more of that precedent. But at the same time, we can't disenfranchise the entire female gender because a very small portion of males that have transitioned to females want to compete. I believe they should be allowed to compete. I believe that we should discuss if there should be a trans division. I believe that we should discuss is there an age? Is there, you know, what if you transition before the age of 15 or you transition before the age of 14? And now that that has to be part of all of this discussion. I think all that stuff needs to be brought to the surface for us to make progressive decisions. But in this instance, I've been around Haley Reichert losing medals to a male and it is not fair. It's not fair to the women involved. It's not fair at all. There's a physiological advantage, there's bone structure, there's more neurological endings. You can create much more force because you have more lean muscle mass as a male and that's how you've adapted your entire life. But again, the whole goal here is to figure out a fair means, a fair solution to solve the issue of males that transition to females and still provide those trans females a positive means of competition and respect their life choice. That's another thing. We can't take that away from them. That's their their choice. And we need to appreciate and respect what they have chosen and still look for a means and a solution to provide them a way to compete. So please comment down below with your thoughts on Laurel Hubbard 
I want this to be respectful. I want to appreciate and respect Laurel Hubbard and who she is as an individual while also respecting and appreciating the entire male and female genders and, and just have some sense of tact when you're commenting down below and what you think would be a positive solution so that we can start to have a good discussion and hopefully we can find some means of pushing this conversation forward so that we can really start to iron out what the best case scenario is. So if you want more content discussing sports performance and what's going on in the sporting world, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.